Yo, what's good, YouTube, man? It's Gabe with another fan TV, man. Back at you this video. Like the content of this video, go ahead and smash that like button. Hey, look, also comment down below your thoughts on the video. And if you're new here, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, man. I'm about 35 or so subscribers away from hitting that 1,000. Thank you for everybody who has been subscribing lately. And yeah, maybe we're going to keep rolling, keep pushing these videos out. All right, so look. Uh, Eric Bianami was named the uh, Commander's Office of Coordinator, right? Which is not totally surprising, honestly. Um, after the Ravens hired Todd Munkin, we knew that he was either going to go back to Kansas City or probably go to the Commanders, right? The interesting part is what Adam Schefter had put out is the fact that deal is complete and official. Washington is giving Eric Bianami the title of assistant head coach and offensive coordinator. Uh, in the words of one source, a promotion, a promotion and title, contractual structure, multi-year, and annual pay raise. So... Um, I told you the Ravens couldn't compete with that or something like that, something to that effect. And that's just the truth, man. The Ravens couldn't compete with the fact that he was going to get a uh, an assistant head coaching job. You know what I mean? Uh, it sounds like, to me, uh, Ron Rivera might have one foot out the door. You know, whether that's, um, you know, he's obviously he's had health problems in the past. I, you know, I think he had cancer. He beat that. Um, he's also just an older guy. You know what I mean? So it sounds like the Red, almost called the Red, it sounds like the commanders, uh, almost fired Ron Rivera without actually, you know, letting him go. Um, cause I can't imagine that he's okay with just having an, an assistant head coach, right. That was brought in by the team almost, you know, I don't know how much Ron Rivera was involved in this process. I mean, I'm sure he's the head coach, so he gets to pick off as a coordinator, things like that. But it sounds like, um, this is why. When people were going, going on, like, all right, Ravens versus Commanders. Obviously, the Ravens are the better job, better quarterback, better organization, whatever, right? More stable, even though the Commanders have weapons. You know, you got your Terry McLaurin's over there and things like that, Curtis Samuel. Um, they, they got some good players over there in, in Washington. They do. Uh, but the Ravens, are, I would say, is probably a more stable, better organization. But if every beginning, mean, you're wearing your options and you got, a guy, you got a team that's saying this is officer coordinator job, and then you could go somewhere else, maybe after a year or two, if you succeed, get the head coaching job. Or you can come here to Washington where you're pretty much the head coach in waiting. I mean, that's the easy choice in my eyes, right? Um, so <laughs> when the Ravens at first didn't get the enemy, they hired Munkin. Um, I, like I put in my time, I was, I was slightly disappointed. Not like that. Like I said, Tom Munkin was my number two guy, right? But if the enemy is out there, um, they should have did everything they, did, that they could to get him. I even said try to make him the highest paid coordinator. But... Um, you could do that, but if the title doesn't match up, then it's not, not going to mean much. Now, we know that coming here, that it was no way. There was no way John Harbaugh was going to let him be an assistant head coach, right? Uh, John Harbaugh is not letting anybody have that kind of power in the organization over him, you know what I mean? Um, so, when I saw that, it, it kind of was like a little bit of a, hmm. So, maybe the Ravens didn't just pass over the enemy. Maybe it was the simple fact that Washington was going to give him a better uh, higher uh, structure in the organization. And um, honestly, for every inmate, it's, it's about time. It's about time, to be quite honest with you. You know, the Chiefs over the last five years have had a top five offense each of the last five seasons. Now, you can say that's down to Patrick Mahomes, Travis Kelsey, even when Tyreek Hill was there. But coaching is a major factor. While the coaches getting out there, to, you know, the players are, um, the players obviously could take a scheme and maximize it, but the coaches got to put those players in the right position to succeed. And the Chiefs have done that the entirety of pretty much Patrick Mahomes' career. Um, and they, they, they've been like that. You know what I mean? So, um, Eric Bambi finally gets to step out of Andy Reid's shadow and get a job where it's going to be his offense. Now, the biggest question for him is, uh, you know, how much faith does he have in Sam Howell to be the quarterback? Is Sam Howell the guy that they really want to turn to and hand the keys over to and say, hey, look, man, this is your team? Um, when he played that last game versus the Cowboys, he looked pretty good. You look pretty good. Armor strong, you know. Uh, Sam Howell reminds me a lot of qualities of uh, Baker Mayfield. You know what I'm saying? Maybe without, you know, kind of Baker Mayfield's uh, attitude and things like that. But ha has kind of the same qualities and similarities as, as, as a Baker Mayfield. Maybe he could be good in this league. You know, well, that, that's that's the seed. You know, that's to come down the line. But um, as far as uh, the Ravens go with Airbnb, enemy, it makes a lot more sense now. It makes a lot more sense. Because at first, you know, you got to think like, I mean, if he's out there, this has got to be the top guy. This is the prime candidate. This is the guy that you're saying, hey, look, we got to turn the keys over to him. He's going to take this offense to an elite level. Why would you not hire him? Um, but, you know, 
as the reports start coming out and Schefter says things like, you know, assistant head coach, uh, to me, he, he's, he's been, he's been named the commander's new head coach. If you ask me, honestly, I ain't, ain't going to lie to you. Uh, because, uh, I can't imagine Rivera's going to be there two, three more years with the enemy just waiting in the wings. You know, I would, I, this is a situation where this is probably Von Rivera's last year, um, there in Washington and, you know, he moves on, retires, whatever the case may be. But I can't imagine that he's hanging on and hanging around too long um, with they just elected a new officer coordinator, new assistant head coach waiting in the wings for a guy that's been a hot candidate for many, many years um, in Airbnb, you know. So, like I said previously, man, he deserves it. It's about time. Uh, every time he was a coach of soccer going on, there were things about like, oh, he doesn't interview well and things like that he doesn't get along there was also rumors about him not getting along with the players in Kansas City stuff like that that um I think it was Sean McCoy that said something like that uh, a while ago about the enemy and his attitude and things like that but um it's plenty of coaches that you know players might not 100% like that that are tough on players that are hard on players that try to get the best out of him he ain't the first coach to do that he ain't the last um he probably ain't even the highest ranking on that kind of list you know what I mean so to me that wasn't really in the valid excuse and the valid reason uh, only reason I can really think of is the fact that it's Andy Reid. You know, people think that this is Andy Reid's offense to the to the tenth degree, and there's no uh, anybody else in there that's even making a contribution. Andy Reid is a genius, so you know he's he's deserved that kind of praise and consideration. But you know, Airbnb ain't been on the sideline just twiddling the thumbs. You know, I said this in a preview when I broke down uh, when I had like my Super Bowl reaction. If you watch the game, there's multiple times where. You know, whether it's TV timeout, regular timeout, whatever, you know, they show Patrick Mahomes walking to the sideline and he's walking to Eric Bieniemy. You know what I mean? He's not like just making a beeline for Andy Reid. Him and Bieniemy are talking to each other, going over the plays, uh, trying to get the offense in the best chance, best positions to score. Um, so, and he's done that, you know. So, um, it was always weird to talk of how people would talk down on Bieniemy for not calling plays. Is this his scheme, this and that, whatever, when. The Buccaneers just hired Dave Canales, who was also a prime candidate for the you know the Ravens job. Uh, I think he got a second interview here as well. Um, he never called plays. He was a QB coach. He was a passing game coordinator. He never called plays, but that hasn't really been brought up with him, you know. So it's just it's interesting the um, the back and forth, the hypocrisy of one guy gets this label, the other guy doesn't get this label. But you know, end of the day, it's good for Airbnb, right? It's it's, it's very very good for him. Um, yeah. And simply, the Ravens could not compete with the fact that he was going to be the given the title of assistant head coach, bro. It's no way. Is 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 nothing that they could do about that. Um, but did, well, I loved having Airbnb here. Yeah, I said before, I said it many times. He was he was number one for me. You know, you look at what he does. It will be a major culture shift in Baltimore to have a guy like the enemy here. Now, Munkin is a good offensive coordinator. He's versatile. He could fit into almost anything you want to do. But you know, the enemy, you would have had to change some things around here. You would have for sure had to change the things around here. And sometimes, you know, we can say it. The Ravens are stuck in their ways. They're stuck in their ways. They, they want to do their things their way. They're a certain one way, right? Um, especially John Harbaugh, you know. So, um, that's been a problem for a long time. He's been kind of stuck in the way he wants to do things, you know. Um, it's John Harbaugh's way or the highway. So, Eric Bieniemy, maybe he never really was a prime candidate for the position. That was kind of like a smoke and mirrors kind of thing. Because the more you think about it, the more you're like, he, you know, Hall, John, you had to believe some of this pressure. Like, you had to give up some of this control. And from what we know about John Harbaugh, from what we've seen from John Harbaugh, that hasn't really been his bag. That hasn't really been his thing to do is give up control, give up power. Um, now, with Munkin, I thought the Ravens thought that it was safe. It was a safer hire, right? Uh, Ty Munkin, I don't know if his, he has aspirations to be a head coach again. Probably. Maybe. Uh, but you would think that coming off of two national championships at Georgia, um, where the offense was dominant. I'll tell people, I I've been telling you since we hired Ty Munkin. Like, go look at the previous Georgia's offenses before Ty Munkin. Like, like, the, like the couple years prior before he got there. They, 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 were, they were a good team, but they wasn't doing what they were doing once they got Munkin. They were, like, destroying people. You know, defense has always been good. The SEC, this, this and that. But with Tom and God, they, they took it to another level as far as the offense goes. Okay. Um, but anyway, it's interesting because you would think that he would want a head coaching job, right? Uh, two national championships back to back. One of the best offenses in the, in, the, in, the, uh, in the NCAA. Yeah, let me get a head coaching job. But it seemed like he was only interested 
and offensive of coordinator jobs. So uh, with that being the case, um, Ravens probably felt that, hey, look, he's going to be here for a couple years. We can settle guys in the system. He knows how to work with uh, what we got, you know. Even though the whole Tyler Michael knows how to work with what we got thing and every enemy he wouldn't have is kind of overrated because the Chiefs use multiple tight ends. You know, I know people, I know Ravens fans, we kind of hear the words tight end and kind of make it like a bad word. Like, you know, Greg Roman has uh, scarred us on the position of tight end. But um, the two teams in the Super Bowl use multiple tight ends. Three out of the last four teams in the playoffs use multiple tight ends. Is it their main offense? I'm not going to say that, but it does get a, a, an effective use out of that. They, they do get an effective use out of that offense, I should say. Excuse me. Um, but yeah, man, so, you know, Airbnb, anyway, being the uh, commander's new assistant head coach and offensive coordinator is a big step up for him. It's a big hire, and it's something that, uh, well, he deserved, you know. Um, it's about time. It seemed like Andy Reid was campaigning really, really heavily for him to get a head coaching job, and um he kind of got one, I guess, you know, he halfway got a head coaching job. So I guess that's good enough for right now. And uh, next year, maybe he'll be the full and complete head coach of the Washington Commanders. And, you know, we'll see what happens from there. But uh, that's my thoughts on the video. I mean, that's my thoughts on the Airbnb and the Ravens. Could they got him or not? It looked like they were really never in the running if the Commanders were going to offer him that. But, man, we have come to the end of the video, dog. If y'all like the content, y'all stayed to this point in the video, go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you don't already subscribe, man. And, uh, yeah, I'm going to get out of here. It's your boy Gable. That's on the Fan TV. I'm out.